All right, everyone, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. Hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is a really important talking point. It's Frank Lampard's Chelsea burnouts. <laughs> At spells, Frank Lampard's Chelsea team look incredibly good, exciting, entertaining, attacking, high octane, etc. But what's happening in the second half? Surely Frank Lampard's halftime talks have got to be top tier considering his character. But Chelsea are experiencing problems and we're going to get into that today. But before we do get into today's video, I'd like to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel. I upload every single day and you don't want to miss out the content. So do subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon, please. And why not like the video? All right, so yesterday Chelsea drew with Leicester at home at Stamford Bridge. The homecoming, the epic scenes of Frank Lampard's return. Now, if you have not seen my match review of that game, I do suggest and urge you to go and give it a watch because you know what I take you through it I let you know who performed well who didn't and how basically things went down and what the problems were but in today's video I'm gonna be doing a deep dive on one of those particular problems and that is Frank Lampard's Chelsea's players concentration capitulation energy levels dropping, that sort of thing. I guess maybe burning out. Now a really good comparison to make here would be, do you remember when Jurgen Klopp first joined the Premier League and joined Liverpool and employed his exciting rock and roll football, no heavy metal football, that's it, his Gengen press to that Liverpool side. He didn't have the personnel to you know, employ his football properly yet. And maybe you should think about that with Frank Lampard and Chelsea, plus transfer ban, plus no Eden Hazard, all that stuff. But Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool had huge, huge burnout issues. They scored loads of goals. I know Chelsea aren't scoring loads of goals at the minute, but if you look at how they're attempting to play, an incredibly high press from the front, superb combinations and great phases of attacking play. Really exciting and entertaining stuff. This is what's happening with Frank Lampard. Maybe they're actually capitalizing less than they should do as well because they probably would have got a win on the board by now if it wasn't for poor finishing. So there's a few things to consider and talk about with this. I want to talk about the fatigue element of it and how this type of play may drain the players and prevent them from you know continuing for a full 90 but really it's a concentration thing too because I don't want to overlook the fact how Chelsea in the last two or three games, I know they were better in Istanbul for the full even 120, but that had cup final vibes. You can't always summon that kind of energy, the drain of like nervous and emotional energy from occasions like that. You're not going to do that for 38 domestic league games and cup games in between. So concentration levels need to maintain. I know that comes with energy, but it also just comes with professionalism. And also, I don't think Frank Lampard wants these gaps to appear like they have been appearing in second half performances for Chelsea. Obviously, that makes the Blues very vulnerable on the counter attack and very vulnerable in transition, same old story. Chelsea are obviously very vulnerable on set pieces as well, but I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. That's something in the match review that you can go back and watch. But they've been letting teams like Manchester United and Leicester have free hits through midfield, often on the counter attack attack but they are not occupying the right spaces like just a top six side should. Very sloppy and worrying indeed. But let's put a pin in the concentration issue. Maybe that's something Frank Lampard can sort out, iron out, beat out of the players <laughs> on the training pitch. We'll have to see. Let's talk about the energy levels because if you look at the example of yesterday's game against Leicester at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea were sensational for the first 20 minutes. It was an incredibly entertaining game on the whole uh, because Leicester got back in it and it was up and down, up and down. But for that first period, that was the dominant period of the game from one team. Sure, Leicester carved out a bunch of chances in the second half, but for that first 20 minutes from Chelsea, it was electric, it was high octane football, it was heavy metal football. But the fact is, that kind of application and pressure for 90 minutes, that's untenable for 90 minutes. And that's the truth for any team. I know Chelsea came off a big 120 minute slog in Istanbul and they're not quite 
perhaps full match fit for the season. It takes maybe teams a while to get to their peak. Regardless, a team is not going to sustain that for a 90 minute period. So where does that leave them? They need to be clever, they need to be smart, and if their concentration levels are just dropping generally in terms of basic defending and occupying the right spaces, you don't think they're going to be smart in other elements of the game. On a little tangent, look how the best players in world football play, Messi, Ronaldo, they do something resting without the ball, like they conserve energy. People often say, oh, they're walking around, but then they're not having a good game and they're walking around, but somehow they scored a hat trick. No, it's because this is what you have to do. Sure, Frank Lampard wants Chelsea to play as a collective team and, you know, press together and defend together. Good, fine. But there needs to be intelligent resting of energy because if you press like that for 20 minutes and then ultimately, even if you are running for the rest of the game, your sharpness between the ears will drop and therefore defending as a team will decline also. So, better distributed application in terms of energy. This is something I think Jurgen Klopp learned when he went to the Premier League and his game compressed. Like I said, they were scoring more goals because their finishing was better, but they were playing entertaining football, but they were leaking loads and loads of goals. Now, I'm not saying that Chelsea are gonna leak loads and loads of goals because I think Chelsea have a better back line than what Liverpool had when Jurgen Klopp arrived. But in terms of all-round play, there needs to be a better methodical approach. Don't get me wrong, it's positive for what Frank Lampard's doing at Chelsea. The players have bought into it 100% and you can see that. That's why they're running themselves into the ground. And the fans want Frank Lampard to do well. You know what, I think the media wants Frank Lampard to do well. And probably a little bit opposition fans like Frank Lampard. He's not an unlikable character. So he has the backing of the majority of world football, I'd say. The problem is learning on the job at Chelsea. When Jurgen Klopp, to use the comparison again, joined Liverpool, they hadn't won anything for a while, he was allowed to rebuild. I think the general concept is allowing Frank Lampard to rebuild, but the fact of the matter is Chelsea have been winning a lot of late in the last few seasons. People need to be realistic and look what's happening at the club, but at the same time, there is a sort of air of entitlement amongst the fans even if they're the biggest Frank Lampard super fan they're used to seeing their team win and that might be detrimental if they turn on Frank Lampard if Chelsea don't get a win against Norwich they'll obviously be problems and the bookies will start <laughs> presenting some very altered odds I think in the sack race already probably because that's their nature but if you look at Frank Lampard and his application to the Chelsea team, there are loads of positives. The players all really, really want to play for him. He wants to play direct and effective at attacking football, and we've seen that. It just seems like with that has come a lot of naivety. Now, can you critique a manager in his second season of management for being naive? Probably not. But this comes with the territory of being Chelsea manager. One thing is for sure, everyone will be in it together. His coaching staff, the players, and hopefully people at board level, certainly, you know, technical advisor Petr Cech. Everyone wants him to succeed. Communication will be open. There'll be no cliques or problems talking to each other, which Chelsea have had internally with previous coaches under previous regimes. So everything is on the table. Everyone understands each other and everyone is in it together and wants it to work and will fight for each other, which is a huge positive. So there are things to be happy about. The players really want to play for the coach. They're trying to play the right kind of football. Everyone's in the same boat, understands each other and wants each other to succeed. There's no rifts and there's that support network in the club and it looks like a healthy environment inside Stamford Bridge and inside Chelsea, which in the last 10, 15 years has been a rarity, let's be honest. So what's required of Frank Lampard? Is it a personnel issue? Maybe. I still subscribe to the theory of Chelsea actually having good players. Sure, perhaps they might maybe need a new striker by the time they've assessed Chelsea's current three strikers a bit more. But with the return of hudson Adoy, Loftus-Cheek, uh, Rich James, Chelsea have a good 11. Emerson has been excellent under Frank Lampard, and although Azpilicueta has been okay in moments, 
you'd fancy Reese James to come in and make a big difference for Frank. But it's finishing off early chances and it's concentration levels not dropping. Remember, Frank Lampard, to assess these problems at Chelsea, he needs a sample size. Sure, he had pre-season where he was constantly switching players, playing, you know, farmers from like, other countries and stuff, but he needs this Premier League sample size to assess how his players are doing. And if you take everything into consideration and still show, watch how well they played against Liverpool, watch how well they played against Leicester in parts, that should be enough for Frank Lampard to say, all right, this team can do it. This team is capable and they can do it to the level that is really, really impressive and threatening. So let's address the problems. Let's address the fatigue problems. Let's address the dropping of concentration. And he needs to put his coaching hat on and address the spaces between the lines and, you know, the vulnerability on the counter-attack. Because again, let's be honest, <laughs> Madison and Tielemans, they had the run of the park at Stamford Bridge in that second half. It's early doors in the Premier League and all teams are figuring each other out. They need to assess the opposition and see what they're doing this season while they develop their own tactics against the opposition. Remember, Frank Lampard and Jody Morris will play a pragmatic approach and look at the opposition. They won't play in idealistic style of football and stick to a certain way and you should be comforted by that fact anyway guys what do you think i want to get your thoughts down in the comments do you think my comparison to jurgen klopp's early liverpool is a good comparison does that offer you comfort does that make you think that chelsea need new personnel or just need time on the training pitch do you agree with me that it has been entertaining football at times and for not frustrating moments of poor finishing or lapses of concentration, which is stuff that should be able to be fixed on the training ground. Do you agree it's generally positive? Because let's be honest, that is stuff that should be fixed on the training ground. Anyway guys, like I said, if you haven't seen my match review from yesterday, go and watch it. I do break it all down and there is a lot of positives in there as well as the obvious negatives. I just wanted to pick up on a couple of points today, but I would urge you to go and watch that. If you have enjoyed today's video, everyone, please do like the video and why not subscribe if you are new. Remember, I'm uploading all the time. So I want you guys to keep up with the content. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick and remember you can support the channel by becoming a patron if you fancy. Link in the description. That's it from me guys. You enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby